I arrived to Mexico City in, in 1989 and I was very much taken with this kind of um, uh, kind of the urban and, and synthetic culture of, of all these kind of plastic millions and millions of plastic objects that were produced within the, the urban culture. But I think that my work has to be understood in a very kind of layered like way. I don't think it's, it's not a linear kind of approach. I'm very much looking at a, a kind of fragmented history and that fragmentation I think gets always you know passed through these these various media but it's 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 a uh, it's obviously always according to the project but I think it's this 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 kind of layered approach which I think is is help people have to understand the work this is uh, filmed in um, a surrealist garden in Mexico it's about a place which is about 10 hours from Mexico City um, and it was um, a garden full of these concrete structures made by um, an English patron of the art school, Edward James. Mm -hmm. And he built the garden over 20 years. He made it his lifetime project. Um, and this place is extremely hard to get to. Um, it's non-functional, it's irrational in its, in its sense. It's, it's very much about emotional architecture and the way in which the structures kind of grow organically. Rafael Ortega and I, who's, uh, who I always collaborate with on the film projects, we thought that this verticality would had to be used as some kind of opposition to the classic film structure, or the horizontality of the, of the classic film stru structure. And this, in a way, parallels the idea of the place itself. I've worked on this project with the curator, Paula Santos Goy, and we thought that, uh, as this was the first presentation in Brazil of my work, that it would be important to link um, an older works with with this with this newer piece. And the idea of this is uh, of the the Paris projects was was somehow a renegotiation of the monochrome. And by placing this wall in front of the there's, uh, there's a painting behind this wall. So by placing this wall as a kind of blockage in front of the painting, the viewer is forced to, I mean, this being in so many ways like a, a kind of monochrome in itself. So it's forcing the viewer to see um, uh, the painting from the side. So there's this kind of double blockage, if you like, of not being able to see frontally. And I think that's the key connection between this piece and, uh, and the Kilikla, is uh, not being able to understand things from, let's say, a, a sole linear perspective. And here we have in the, in the second part of the show four or five paintings which are very much um, kind of palimpsest-like in their structure. They're layers upon layers upon layers and it's quite, they're quite translucid and in a sense hard to really fix what the finished product is exactly about. Then there's the structure of the, the vertical film and the vitrine, which is a, again a kind of free association of certain objects and images which were important to me in the making and, and, and structuring of these projects.